Thank you very much. First, I would like to thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure for me to be here and to give you my speech and tell you about Germany. And it's also very interesting for me to learn about the situation in Seoul, what we are doing, and what's the situation in other countries, so like Japan and France. In Germany, the promotion of civic engagement has been a very important topic of governmental policies since the end of the 1990s. And within this framework, I would like to tell you about the civic engagement of and for older people and the role in local levels in our countries. I will show you first, give us some ideas about our conceptual framework, what we think is civil engagement, and what is the role of local levels. Then I would like to show you some statistics about the changing involvement of elderly people in this time period. I will show you some practices, I hope good practices, you will see it later on, some examples. And then I will give a short outlook to Sweden because I work with the International Project and Jung Ho asked me to give some ideas of another country. And then in the final conclusion, I will summarize but show you also now the discussion, the difficulties, the strengths and the weakness of our, of our policies. For the def definition of civic engagement, I took the second engagement report. It's a report written by a, a committee set up by the German government to, to evaluate the development in, in the area. So it's, it's most what is done in politics. It's of course very broad definition, what is civic engagement, all actions, activities undertaken by volunteers with and behalf of others. And important in Germany is like also perhaps for you in, in Korea, civic engagement is oversposed. It's voluntary work, that means services, we call it, or voice democratic dialogue. That means first you look that people, volunteers, beca are becoming involved in practical activities organized by clubs, corporations, self-help groups, and so on, but it's also to support the democratic, the voice of people to make their voice heard, have a say in decision making above all on local levels also. Then I would like to tell you about the role of local levels because it's very important for you, of course. Generally in Germany, the municipalities have acted a strong role in this area because they have a general responsibility, if we call it, to promote the provision of services of general interest, that means to help people to have a fulfilling life, a good life in the local area. And for elderly people, it's defined also by law, they should support social integration, self-determination and autonomy. And it's also important for, for the actual civic engagement because 80% of civic engagement is done or located on the local level. So actors are very important, but in the, in the politics they are embedded in a framework of different types of governance, we call it. First, a type of horizontal governance. That means in Germany, the tasks of the municipality is not to do all on their own. The task is to promote, to coordinate, to moderate, and so on, and to cooperate in such sense with civil society organizations, increasingly more with long-term care insurance, which uh, pays the care for, for long-term care people in Germany, with private businesses, and so on. This is one part, and the other part, they're also embedded in a vertical governance or ver vertical hierarchy, we put it here, the engagement policies in Germany have all have to be done in cooperation between the, the German levels. The federal level means the national level. Then we have, of course, federal states in Germany because we have federal state and the municipalities. Here, very, very important for the development was the creation of motel programs. That means mainly on the federal level or the federal state levels, a range of motel programs have been yeah, established and now the municipalities could write applications and could take part in this model program, get some financing, adapt it to their own situation. It's difficult a mixed financing, so it all have to pay, contribute to the financing, the municipality, federal state and the national state. And the main goal of the policies was to establish an infrastructure for civic engagement in the country. I have showed you two different model programs so to get an idea of what does this mean, but we have a wide range of model programs. 
One is the Salter City. It's a very old model program, but still in life. Yeah? And this means a program to, to invest in the neighborhoods. The main goal is to develop neighborhoods in, in disadvantaged living areas in, in big cities mainly. So it's also about the promotion of civic engagement to support this neighborhood life. And with the demographic change, the focus came also increasingly on elderly people in this area. A quite different program is the next program, is establishment of senior agency. A lot of programs are related to established agency, senior agency, voluntary agencies, and so on. They're established on the local levels, and they should provide information, counseling, and quarter, and also recruitment or placement of here senior agencies, elderly people, to do some type of civic engagement. Against this policy level, I would like to show you some changes in civic engagement of older people in Germany. We have, since 1999, a representative survey, our voluntary survey, which every five years uh, makes this big survey and asks people 14 years and elder about the civic engagement. I show you here, it's very broad defined, so you get very easily a person who has civic engagement. Yeah? You have to hold a honorary office or to do some type of voluntary work. Voluntary work means to carry out concrete tasks, typically all unpaid or only paid by a small allowance. They gave they named you 14 domains where you could say, yes, I'm doing some type of this work in this area. So within this broad definition, we can show an increase of civic engagement for the population all, 14 years plus, from 34 to 44%. We have also an increased civic engagement for the elderly people or our older adults. We take here 55 years and older, you see about 10%. And in particular, it increased for the people between 65 and 74 years with 15%. I show you here about the frequency because typically you don't have to tell your frequency so you get an idea what is done. You see about two third do at least several times a month months, some type of, of voluntary work. In my next part, I would like to show you what are they doing, <laughs> what, are, what are good practices, what are the type of voluntary work, how do, did we do it? I, first, I idea uh, area-based policies which are strongly related to neighborhood to de developments. Here I sh show you two different projects. One project we call in Germany ZWA groups, ZWA self-help groups. ZWA means zwischen Arbeit und Ruhestand, or in English, between employment and retirement. This, po this policy is also a model program developed in one federal state and is now used in 60 municipalities in this federal state. The basic, the target group here are elderly people in the period of transition between employment and pension. What are they doing? They should establish self-help groups. They should define, of course, like their own issues. They should define their own solutions. And they get professional support during the period of establishment, but can also get further training if they need it, and so on. So they can get all support to, to create something. The results are that they always create a variety of opportunities of participation, offers for encountering or networking. And you find, of course, here all the civic engagement in both types. You find voluntary work because they have to realize their solutions in some sense, but also democratic dialogue or voice because they have the right to participate in round table. In Northern Westphalia, on the local level, there's a lot of round tables where actors involved in certain issues are called and they can discuss a good solution for everyone. And these SWA groups are very uh, involved in these in this round tables so that they also can bring forward their ideas, what they need for the situation. The difficulties is typically always been, it was very difficult to involve new members in this group because the groups are very, very fast. And they had a lack of money to establish new groups and was, it was made a big of difficulties. Another idea I would like to show you in this type of area-based policies 
a project, we call it Quartiersnetz in Germany, that uh, elderly people are, uh, should become activists in neighborhood. That's a very new project. It's also a mixed finance project. What is here is the goal, of course, it's what the municipalities always should do. They should promote self-determination, social participation of elderly and people on the local level. The approach here is they should develop opportunities for social participation of the elderly and mainly establish networks. And they should also use modern technique and they should also help elderly people to use this way to coordinate to network with other people. It's also always a cooperation project. What are they doing concrete? They had four times a year a neighborhood conference. They, they wrote a letter to all people in the neighborhood. They invited all people and had a neighborhood conference four times a year. Here is the problem in Germany that typically you have a dominance of well-educated people in a good economic situation. But to include also other people, people in a bad situation, less privileged people, vulnerable groups, they say, we have to be on the road. Yeah? That means not to invite only people to your conferences, to go to people, yeah? to go to the places where the people are, to try to meet people so that all the they get involved in the program. That's very important in Germany. So they have neighborhood parties, neighborhood walks, neighborhood coffee bars, and so on, to come into contact. And in Germany, in, in the big cities, in these areas, we have very often a lot of people with migration backgrounds due to our migration policies. And they typically recruited also people as professionals with migration backgrounds to have contacts, yeah? to make contacts with all groups in this area. Of course, voluntary work, you have an increase in participation and they define new profiles. What you could do as a volunteer, you could be an editor, a companion, a neighborhood networker, and so on and so on. And it could also become a representative of the elderly people in round table discussions. That is one part, it's about these area-based policies. The next part I would like to show you are voluntary work within the area of long-term care insurance. So as Korea or the Germany has a long-term care insurance which, fi which financing benefits for people in need, in need of, of long-term care service, of long-term care support. We have voluntary service in both areas, in home care and in nursing homes. And here I would also like to show you how it works. In home care, we typically define it low threshold services. What does this mean? What is low threshold services? Low threshold services, we define types of services we, we think it should be, or our government thinks, yeah, it should be, be below the professional level. For example, daycare groups, small, care in small groups, some hours, some days a week only, care at home, someone is coming to your home and support you with, with your frail elderly family member, to, to establish social activities, to uh, provide unburdening counseling service for informal carers, and to provide social, household assistance. This type of policies has been developed since 2002 and has been reformed sometimes, yeah, in the meantime. In 2002, it, it, the main idea here is that civic... Ah, I take the next one, how it's done. The main idea here is that civic society organization should develop concepts, approach, what they would like to provide within this framework. Typically, it's done, we call it trained voluntary workers. It means voluntary workers who get a small training and the supervision of professional carers or it can also be formally organized neighborhood assistance, also voluntary work. It, this concept has to be accepted by the federal states, and then you can use it within the framework of long-term care insurance. The beneficiaries can use their benefits to buy or to pay for these services, but it's typically on a low level. Yeah? They don't get much money with this benefit, it's very low. And the prices are also very low because the voluntary workers only get a small allowance for, for, this, for this work. Here we have, of course, a big de debate in Germany about monetarization of, of voluntary work. That means is, has voluntary work in this area has become of low page 
low wage employment because you don't have to respect first minimum wage, no regulation on the labor market and so on. So we will have the debate at the end of my presentation. The other type of voluntary service is within nursing homes. Here we see, have the ideas that nursing homes should become hybrid organizations. That means organizations who combine professional and civil society based services. The main goal of this, we call it, is the de institutionalization of nursing homes by involvement of civil society. So the nursing home should move closer to society that people don't, don't feel outside any longer of society. It's done by voluntary work also, but also for, by opening up for local actors who come to nursing homes and should offer some activities or should invite people from nursing homes to their own conferences and activities. And it's, it's an idea to move nursing homes in the middle of society in some sense, on the local levels. Here we'll focus only on voluntary work, but I would like to show you what has developed in this area in Germany. It's a very important study of Hamel from 2016, and she found in nursing homes three different types of integrating voluntary work. The first in, is integration with a focus on classical care services. Here, the voluntary workers who are, who are working, they're not employed, who are working in nursing homes, are conducting basic classical, classical basic care work. Here also the debate is, do they get cheap labor? Yeah? Because they're hourly paid on a very low level, have no employment rights. Do they get cheap labor in these institutions? Paid by hourly or small allowances. The next types they found is integration, they call it based on structural separation. Here, voluntary workers, vol civic, civic societies are invited to come to nursing homes and to provide their own autonomous service. They can decide what they think is good, what they would like to provide. It's typically social activities they provide. Yeah? They help elderly with social activities based on their own definition. But in these homes, nursing homes, you have limited interactions. The, the voluntary sector or the voluntary workers do their own job, yeah? and the professional workers do their own job. The third type she found is the development of cooperative structures. Here also the voluntary workers or the civic society has a right to find their own contribution. They say, this we would like to do. They don't do the basic nursing work, but they are more integrated in the, in the nursing home. So there's more cooperation, more dialogue, more discussion, what they should provide, how is this related to professional services and so on. They can also get support by the professionals and so on. So that's a more integrated way, but still they are providing their own ideas, yeah? their services they like and they think they should, should be provided. Before I come finalize, I think very quick, I would like to show you some ideas of the case of Sweden, because Yong Ho, we have contact, I'm, I'm preparing an international project in this area and this, it asked me if I can provide some ideas of another country. So one country is Sweden in, in our, in our pro, uh, project. Sweden has a very different idea of, of voluntary work and I think it's interesting to discuss it here also. Of course, voluntary work is defined as unpaid. It's very unpaid in Sweden, not paid by a small allowance. It's freely chosen and it's conducted with an independent but publicly supported civil society organizations. That's very important in the Swedish case because they emphasis on the idea of reciprocity, that means we for us. Yeah? People are giving services to other people they know and they expect to get some services back. So Swedes don't like hierarchies yeah, in some sense. They don't want to have an hierarchical situation that people with a lot of money give services to other poor people. They don't like it. Very important in Sweden, in the welfare area, is they have also the idea of voice or dialogue. They are invited to provide their ideas, to have a say in decision making. You have, but you have still you have an increase, but still limited t type of services in the welfare area. You see here how it has changed. So you have also changed in the Sweden system, but it's a very critically, uh, critical change in some sense. 
Then I showed you one program which they had in, in the air, my area, long-term care. They had also program on the state level, they called the national level, the state level, and they said the, the municipalities can have projects where they try to develop support structures for informal carers, but they have to cooperate with civil society organizations. That's, that's a precondition. Otherwise, they cannot get any money. And now uh, it's very interesting how it, okay, but now it's very easy to show had, as it finished, you see that very important for this civil society organization is that they provide other types of services. So they would never come into the welfare area really because they think the welfare services should be, should still be professional services financed by the public system. So they're very, very keen to only de develop services which are outside, yeah? which not interfere with the professional services. That's the main part actually what I can do for Sweden. Then I can make it can come to my conclusion. I think I can, you have understand it, civic engagement is always two types, yeah? services and voice, we call it. We have this multi-level governance. And then I would like to show you what are strengths and weaknesses of our policies. First, the modal programs, for example, area-based policies. Here the strength is you have a mix of dialogue and voluntary work. It's not only voluntary work for society, it's also dialogue, also voice, yeah? in some sense. You have an increase and improvement in the quality of life. You increase social participation, and it's embedded voluntary work. That means embedded in the in development in, in the whole, whole neighborhood. It's not only for it. Yeah, for it. It's understand what does it mean? Embedded in the whole development. The weakness in Germany is the lack of continuity. Very often, it's based on motor projects, and when the projects are finalized, the money is gone, yeah? <laughs> some sense. You have a lot of precarious financing afterwards in this, in this area. We have all the lack of coherence. We have a lot of modal projects in Germany that typically are not really constructed to help each other. They're just ide ideas or solutions of federal states level or federal levels, and they often coexist on these local levels, and this is also, of course, a bad situation. We have found, for example, that these agencies, as agencies to recruit volunteers, are now everywhere in Germany, in all municipalities, you find something. But the, the, the problem is they are not coordinated. They do different jobs, they, they don't work together, and that's a big difficulty. Other problem is that the municipalities have a very weak position. They can apply for money, but they cannot construct it on their own. Yeah? And that's, of course, necessary. And we have a limited support for civic organization. It's more as a recruitment which is finalized, but they are responsible for the voluntary work, actually. And they're all responsible for, for the recruitment. The so long-term care insurance is also a problem. We have these voluntary services, and you can see that they improve the situations for the users. Yeah? It's a better situation, a better care situation. But as I told you before, we have a big debate about monetarization has become voluntary work in this area of long-term care, a type of cheap labor. Of course, no one wants to have, type, no one is perhaps too much, but a lot of actors in the sector don't want to have cheap labor. They want that volunteer work is something on its own, and care work is paid by the government, of course. Yeah? So it's a big debate in Germany. Then all the actors are difficult because it's mainly the insurance, long-term care insurance, and the federal state. And also here, the municipality is not really involved. I would like to come to some solutions, which you already can also find in this report. So we discuss at the moment, we have to strengthen the municipalities, yeah? because the municipalities has a too weak position in this, in this situation. They need more say, they need more, but they need also more money yeah? to do something in their own area. We should not have in future model projects on specific type of, of, of organization, institutions, for example. No model project to, in, to establish senior agencies, voluntary agencies. It should be a development on the region, municipality levels. They should say, we need this type of service, this type of institutions. We need this support to develop civic engagement in our region. And we need what we also have now is the promotion of civil society organizations. They are very important for doing voluntary work, but also for recruitment. We have found in national surveys 50% 
of voluntary work is recruited or is or placed via his civil society organizations themselves. So we need to support these organizations that they can do their job simply. Now I would like to finalize my speech. Thank you very much.